Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. I'm here for day six of my challenge to see if I can hit rank one mythic in standard. And just wanted to uh, give you an update here. So the upcoming weekend is going to be the qualifier weekend for standard, which I am qualified for. So I've been doing best of three content. I will be doing best of one content after this weekend. So I really want to kind of do a little bit of both. But yeah, I've just been really enjoying the journey so far. First of all, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like it. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. You guys mean the world to me and you're the backbone of the channel. So thank you so much. In addition, um, I do have a deck list here for the uh, what we're going to be playing today. It is going to be in the description, both on Moxfield and untapped.gg. And as well, I do also have a link to the playlist so you can see kind of all the previous videos here as well for the journey. Um, in addition, I've also launched uh, memberships on my channel. So if you do want to help support the channel, it's another way to do so. And uh, there are some perks. You do get um, early access to my videos as well as at some of the higher levels, um, member shout outs, priority response to comments, things like that. So if you wanna support um, and appreciate what I'm doing, uh, it's a great way to support. Um, let's get into it here. So no other changes to the deck since yesterday. I really like the addition of Doorkeeper Thrall. I haven't seen it in action yet, but I think, I think it's just gonna be great, um, especially with all like the decks that are in the meta right now. And then, I also feel like I'm getting kind of a better handle kind of on the sideboard plan in general. But let's just jump into some matches here. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but... If you wanna show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. I really do like kind of the way things are going here um, in best of three. It would be nice to see a couple more um, control matchups, but um, whatever we get, I'm happy with just kind of getting the reps in, preparing for Saturday. I hope you guys have had a nice week so far and um, again, put it in the comments if anyone else is going to be um, attending the qualifier weekend for Standard and like what you guys are thinking of playing. And, you know, just feel free to share. It'd be great to hear um, what you guys are doing, what you're excited about. But yeah, so I think that um, I'm actually pretty happy where... You know how the deck is handling here in some of these matchups was able to go 3-0 yesterday um, against some more aggressive matchups like um, mono red aggro boros and uh, excited to see what else is in the meta here haven't really seen a lot of teamer uh, world souls rage in quite a while but i know that they're definitely still out there so i think like we have a pretty good plan in the board for teamer but we'll have to see um, opening hand looks great. Happy to keep. Okay, looks like we're up against Boros. All right, let's get Lunark Veteran going. And then next turn it's going to be between if we want to just be a bit more mana efficient with Sentinel or <clears throat> if um, maybe we draw into something else. I guess we'll see. All right, so they've got the turn one demolition, which is pretty spicy. Really happy we've got veteran here at the very least. And let's go ahead and get frontliner out of their yard. So that's sort of a nice little added benefit here against convoke. Um, we're definitely never blocking here if we can avoid it, so happy to get in with uh, Lunark Veteran. <clears throat> and yeah, they've got a really nice opening into case.
This is going to be a little bit on the back foot, going to be a little difficult to kind of take control of the game here again. So we have a couple different options. We could go for like Inspector plus Sentinel. And we could also get Adeline going. I think just getting Adeline going is going to be pretty good here, at least to hold back some of their two ones. They'll probably just go ahead and fly over here with Warden if they can play some more threats out. But yeah, happy to get Adeline going. Start getting some of those extra creatures, getting some more life. So they put it on top, so maybe they've got, like, Imidane's Recruiter or something coming. Either that or maybe another case. Either way, we're, <laughs> we're not happy about seeing them top something. Um, okay, so let's just go Veteran into probably Inspector into Night Errant here. Yeah, I would probably run out the scent. Uh, the sentinel here as well i guess if there's something we want to get down this turn potentially could try to hold out for <sighs> just trying to think what we could draw here that would matter this turn is like a two drop i guess we could go for like maybe a copper coat vanguard um because we're only really attacking here with adeline right But yeah, we'd have to tap everything so that doesn't work. So let's just go ahead and do the full five. Okay, Copper Coat is great, and another Knight Errant to reload feels pretty good too. Yeah, and they're just going to pack it in just on the strength of that. So I guess that was enough. Feels good. Okay, against Boros, uh, we're going to bring in Doorkeeper Thrall because it is going to be pretty strong here. We want Destroy Evil for um, either their like Knight Errants or possibly their Wardens um, or just for their cases or if they're running like War Leader's Call. March is also great, as is Lantern Flare. So... Um, question is, what do we cut? We probably also want to bring in Glass Casket. It's pretty good there against, like, the, um, the vampire. It, well, I mean, just anything, really, but especially good against the vampire. Sanguine's uh, Evangelist. <clears throat> um, I think we probably cut Brutal Cathar because they're bringing in, like, Lithomantic Barrage. They're going to have some more removal, so it's, like, okay, but it's not as good um and then i think it's also weaker like if we have doorkeeper thrall in play what else do we cut sentinel is still decent because they can like you know target some of the stuff in their yard um also just decent threat i think we actually cut thalia here because they don't have a lot of spells i mean it, it can potentially slow them down but i think it, we're also bringing in some spells of our own, uh, like two more marches and destroy evil and glass casket. So lantern flares, I think it's probably worth cutting. Hurts us almost as much as it hurts them. Um, and then I think maybe cutting like an inspector here. We can maybe consider shaving like a knight errant, just getting onto the board. Although knight errant is really good, but like if we're bringing in doorkeeper thrall, it's going to turn off the benefit of knight errant. So I think maybe like shaving like one Sentinel, one Knight Errant just kind of gives us like a pretty measured approach here. <clears throat> and yeah, this hand looks pretty good. We've got one piece of removal, stuff to do. Night Errant we can go for.
All right, so no gleeful demolition here at the very least. I think they're probably just playing into reinforcements here. And I value like, oh, this is interesting actually, because like, do we value Warden over their reinforcements? The problem is they probably just like play reinforcements and then double block with Inspector and we're trading one for one, which is pretty bad. However, that being said, like we don't have a whole lot to do. I guess we've got our own Knight Errant, so yeah, we probably just sit here. Yeah, so there, there's the reinforcements. I could kind of see it going either way. Like, if they didn't have the Inspector there, I would probably attack, because I would trade it for both um, of their two creatures here. But because we'd be doing one for one, it wasn't quite worth it. Okay, and they've got Case going. We've got Destroy Evil for Case, so I'm not super worried about that. And they want to just activate it now, so this is going to be a nice pickup here for us. We can pick off one of their creatures, they can activate Case, and then we can just shut that down with Destroy Evil. Yeah, and I think we just do the blowout this turn. So, like, we could go Copper Coat Vanguard, but I'd rather just Destroy Evil on their attack step. And then use that to blow them out and like get one of their tokens or something like that. So I think we just sit. Because like right now they're willing to trade token for our Mishra's Foundry, but probably, you know, they wouldn't just want to throw it away. Okay, not exactly sure what they're holding there. Maybe they're trying to like go big with a uh, recruiter on five and just get like the full value. I could see that maybe being the case. Um, but either way, we're just gonna go veteran into knight errant here for two. And I think that's gonna be better than just going like for adversary because we don't have like a lot of stuff going on yet. So let's go for veteran into knight errant. They might also have like reinforcements here. Or they just want to crack clues. Okay, so the reason that I guess for them not cracking that second clue probably means that they drew demolition. Or at least they want to like keep it around as a possibility. But I think they probably just go like, yeah, they drew into demolition here. That makes sense. Okay, no knight errant. And I'm wondering if they have recruiter in their hand and are just trying to go for like the full, full value. All right, here, I guess we could, we could do adversary, but I think adversary is going to be stronger next turn because we can already like push and get some value here with knight errant. And I'd rather just go like, play these three creatures first. Although I guess we can only play two creatures since we only have two white mana. Hmm. I guess if they have like, so if they go like reinforcements into recruiter next turn, they're pushing for a decent amount of damage. Um, maybe it's safer to just play adversary now. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to go for the, the Warden play here instead. And then I think I'm just going to go Inspector because we can also get the draw. We could go Vanguard here too. I think that'd be fine. But... So maybe we can Scry a little bit more and then draw. Um, that's an okay pickup, but I think I just want either mana or something else.
Okay, casket is nice. And yeah, I think we're okay. We're attacking here for four. That feels fine. Um, when I tap this down, I actually probably should have tapped Veteran instead of one of these uh, Wardens. Just so we have the extra two toughness. So that was a mistake. Okay, I guess Iganjo makes sense there. And I guess that's going to be enough. That'll work. Alright, opening hand looks great. So now at least we get to see a game here against control, or a match against control. Definitely going to be leading out with here, uh, with adversary. I guess there is the chance that they could have uh, Virtue of Loyalty, so I'm not going to attack in with a 1-1 in case they do have Virtue here. But yeah, since we do that pre-combat, now we get the attack, which feels good. Yeah, it looks like it is going to be Esper mid-range. Um, unfortunately, well, I guess we can finesse the... Um, actually, never mind. We don't have the ward cost for Iganjo. That just doesn't work. Um, okay, so we just go Inspector plus Sentinel here. So it looks like they're holding up Urtai. That would be my guess. Either Urtai or maybe like um, Iganjo, something like that. But I think this turn we want to just go for Knight Errant anyways. Like if they've got the No More Lies, it's awkward, but I think it's worth going for. The other possibility here is we could just try to like push adversary and push for a bunch of damage which might not be wrong but i think kind of trying to go big here actually is a little better this way if they have the counter we can still like crack the clue or do something yeah that's unfortunate So the question is, do we just like play adversary for two? I don't think so. I think we we try to get value out of it. So let's go for the um, let's go for the draw. I guess the other consideration, like in hindsight, is had we gone for the adversary play, um, well, I guess we only have four mana, so it wouldn't it would have they would still would have been able to cast no more lives there.
So a question here is, do we hold a ganjo or not? Um, it's a big time sink. Might almost be better to just try to... I, I, we could go for adversary here. Otherwise, we could just go Adeline plus Warden. And then maybe just try to like attack with Sentinel by itself, which isn't too bad. I think getting Adeline down here is actually pretty important. Question is, do we play out the Siganjo? Because like, if we draw into land, like it's so good, right? I think we I think we, maybe we do. I guess we can check here with Warden first to see if we have a land coming. That's probably the move. And then if we get in with probably just Sentinel here. Yeah, so we've got a land coming, so this is perfect. So now we can play Iganjo. And get in with Sentinel. This is pretty unfortunate. They have a decent chance of drawing removal here, so they might be holding, like, go for the throat, which is super awkward, but I think we've got to go for it. Like, it's just our best play by a lot. Yeah, and they've got it, unfortunately. Oh, I guess they've got Tidebinder. Either way. Still annoying. We're at 15. Trying to decide if we, like, pump Warden and attack, and then we, that would just, like, leave ourselves completely open. Like, can we race them? I guess they're pushing like 5, 8, 10, 11, 14. Eh, it's not lethal. I suppose if they activate Restless Anchorage, it's probably lethal. Alright, so I think we just attack with Sentinel here. And then like hold back Warden. Yeah, they had two pretty good counters, and then the Tishana was a beating. <sighs> Veterans, like, not enough. We need something better. But I think the real answer here is just, like, the unanswered Rafine. Not having an answer to deal with Rafine early enough probably cost us this game. Oops. Oh, I misclick. I was supposed to block one of the two twos. That was a mistake. Um, so, yeah, if I blocked there, we'd be at six. Oof. That was just a huge misclick. Okay. I don't know that it actually matters, though, because they have, like, Anchorage plus... Rafine, yeah, we can't really use the Aganja super well here. <sighs> yeah, I think we're just in for the next game. All right, so what do we bring in? Um, 
I think this deck, they definitely do run Virtue, or at least they have the ability to run Virtue. So I think Invasion is pretty decent. It's also good because it comes down before Rafine does. Um, we want targets that can deal with Rafine. Glass Casket is good as well. Destroy Evil can target Rafine as well, or like Shieldred or other big threats. Yeah, we have some decent answers here. Um, March, I guess March is good against like their man lands and some of their cheaper stuff. What are we cutting here? Probably cutting Brutal Cathar. It's just a little bit, because they bring in like a decent amount of removal, it's not quite as good. We can probably shave like an inspector or two. But we have a lot of stuff we want to bring in. Like there's there's actually a ton that I want to bring in. I want to bring in like Lantern Flare also. Even Peacekeeper is really good. Man, I don't know what to cut. I guess like Sentinel doesn't do a ton. Like it, it is one of the weaker cards. There's also the question of like we're bringing in so much removal, maybe Thalio's like just not as good anymore. And if we also have invasion, and I think yeah, maybe cutting Thalia here, I could see that, and then bringing in like Lantern Flare. This is not really a Doorkeeper Thrall deck, I don't think. And then maybe like shaving like a Sun Gold Sentinel. Yeah, let's go with this for now. Maybe we try to find room for the other two marches up, but I'm not sure. All right, gonna need to mulligan that hand. Man, I don't wanna go down to five, but one land is pretty rough. I guess we can go like inspector into warden and then try to scry out of it it's a little bit thin but i don't want to go down to five i'm gonna try it i think that's that's maybe the play um and then let's probably pitch peacekeeper just because it's the most expensive card so because of this and i want to make sure i can hit my scries i'm actually not going to lead with veteran and lead with inspector This is definitely a little bit greedy, but like going down to five is pretty bad too. All right, we got lucky. That works. That works too. Especially if they try to hold up No More Lies. I mean, I guess they're not gonna because we've got Cavern, but... <sighs> Deep Cavern Bat is annoying. <laughs> oh well. Could be a good one if we get another land going with it. They probably want to just play Rafine next turn and start gaining life, I'm guessing. Like, if I knew we had a land behind it, I would go for Adversary here. I guess we can keep scrying, so yeah. This could work. Yeah, there's the Rafine like we expected. They've always got it. <laughs> and we got the land, so that works.
Invasion is interesting. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's that can definitely pro provide a decent threat, for sure. I think we just want removal, though. Like, we can potentially slow something down in their hand, like a Shieldred, maybe. But they're just, they'd probably just be casting Shieldred next turn anyways. We want, like, removal for Bat, or possibly removal for Fiend. Because, like, they're gonna, we're going to be trying to go face instead of trying to, like, spend time going for invasion. So I think this is actually not an invasion turn. So I think we just swing with adversary here because like if they've got removal they would target the adversary anyways and then we can just knight errant for three. If they have backup ruffians they might just accept the trade. Um, all right, never mind. They, they might have uh, yeah. So we just attack I think with adversary first. We could try to all in here also, but I feel like they've got enough action. We want to get things going with uh, Knight Errant. So let's attack and see what they do. Okay, did not, I uh, forgot about Virtue. Yeah, that was kind of a beating. the initiate here just because they're going to try to be getting virtue down yeah i think probably the problem here is like yeah just not having an answer for rafine the moment that it hits play it's so dangerous um Obviously, walking into virtue is pretty bad. Not really any good attacks here. They could, like, if we swing with all in, I guess we're pushing. Like, they probably just, like, block here, block here, and they take four, gain three. It's just not a good attack. Yeah, and that's pretty close to lights out. Because they're just gaining nine and then swinging back for a ton. Um, I think that, that might just do it, unfortunately.
Um, I guess we actually, man. I think we killed a bat here because then we can get back in Adeline and replay it. Not even sure we could draw into here i think we've got to use initiate this turn to get rid of loyalty um we're still taking an absolute beating and they could just kill us next turn but if we swing out hmm. otherwise if we play vanguard does that do anything for us because they just block like our three biggest creatures, then we're pushing two, four, six, eight, ten. Not quite enough. Yeah, and they had the the go for the throat there. That's awkward. <laughs> gonna do it unfortunately okay I definitely had a misplay in that match um, but yeah I think just we needed a bit more removal so probably bring in the extra two marches there that's what I would do It's kind of a strange thing because it's like I kind of want Thalia in some ways because Thalia can like make it harder for them to cast the um, Virtue. But it also like if we're overloading on a ton of removal it, it taxes our mana also. And I don't know what else to cut. All right, kind of a weak hand, but we've got some man lands. I think it's enough to keep. is are we up against Esper Control or are we up against Esper Midrange? So we could just attack here with like Foundry, but I think we just push the Adeline and see what happens. If they've got the No More Lies, then they've got it. They could also have just like Go for the Throat. There's so many things they could have. I think we just gotta kind of fight through it. Okay, it looks like it is <laughs> another, uh, yeah, another turn here of um, Esper midrange. So let's see, what do we want to do? Um, I 
We could attack and just see if they will walk into the Yaganjo, but if we do that, we won't be able to play Knight, Knight Errant. So I think we just go for the Knight Errant here. We've already got some life gain going. Do we want double sentinel? I almost wonder if we want like more Lunark veterans here. I guess like one is a decent amount and then we can put some, some decent pressure on. So maybe we just go du double sentinel here. I'm kind of torn on that. Pitching, go for the throat. That's interesting. So maybe they're holding like no more lies. Ah, whatever. We're I think either way we just jam it and hope it works. Again, just like keep presenting threats. Oh, you know what? They actually, they probably have loyalty here. So I think I maybe... Actually, since they're gonna be getting um, a free block in anyways off of our token, maybe we just full send. Yeah, I think that's probably the play. Okay, I mean, that works too. Yeah, Tidebinder is a beating against Adeline. Wow. We definitely do want to make this trade. Oh yeah, because now we can we've got our Adeline back. That's great. Okay, I think we just play our hand out and then just try to make them forget that we can cast Eganjo for two. inspector i think we just want removal um it is like it's certainly fine with warden yeah i mean i guess it's still good with warden i guess we'll take it
All right, so we just got lethal, right? Like if they don't have anything. Alright, so if I'm going to cut Thalia, and Sentinel is okay, but it's like not amazing. Um, maybe we shave a couple Sentinels here. Probably the Brutal Cathars. That gives us a bunch of room to bring in some more stuff. We want Destroy Evil, Glass Casket. So yeah, still a decent amount here for Lantern Flare. I think we want Peacekeeper, March, probably Goba Khan. Actually, I think Lantern Flare, Surge is also decent here. I mean, because it protects one of our creatures. Hmm. Like Lantern Flare is good to maybe cut like one inspector for surge. We want to have enough creatures to kind of keep be keep uh, you know staying aggressive, whatnot. Actually, yeah. Okay, let's try that. Because they do have cut down, they have go for the throat. I'm not sure about Surge. It might be a little bit too thin. Hand's a little bit slow, but we've got good stuff to do on two and three, so that's still pretty good. Nice one drop pickup. And I want to hold the Cavernous Souls in hand as long as possible so that we can like try to have them like waste their turn with uh, holding up No More Lies. Looks like they're stuck on land, which is awesome. Um, I guess if they have Rafine, we could try to put that out of range. They still need the land to get there. So we could also just like go initiate into Night Errant, which is pretty, pretty strong. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I want to go explosive here. It's a little... Like, they need a couple things in order to get... I guess they just need the land to get Rafine going, but... Okay, let's grab an Adeline. Probably Sun Gold Sentinel. I guess we'll have four mana next turn, so we probably just want the veteran just to be like mana efficient.
Yeah, now we just want to go for Peacekeeper. <clears throat> we could also go Copper Coat here to push a little bit more damage and then make um, Initiate harder to block. But I think there's enough benefit here just to go for the Peacekeeper. Yeah, they've got the Rafine. Just need land. Okay, so they could go for... We could turn off their go for the throat, and that's probably pretty good. If they hit Rafine, like it definitely, they can do some stuff, but we can block. So I think that actually turning off go for the throat is a little bit better. They could still do Virtue, they could still do Deep, deep Cavern Bat. And here I'm happy to attack with Initiate because they could block and gain some life, but we still get the counter, which is nice. Yeah, and if they want to trade for Deep Cavern Bat, that's fine too. So they're probably just like holding Tishana's Tidebinder for our Adeline here. If we push with Foundry and then just shove, let's see what else they, they've got. They just have, yeah, just they have Tidebinder. But now because we've got Copper Coat, they won't be able to target Adeline, um, I think, right? Because they have to pay the ward cost. And then we just full in shove here, see what they do. Okay, so I guess they can still they can still stop it because it's just targeting the ability and not the, the actual creature or something. I wasn't sure how that interaction was going to go. But I think it's going to be largely moot. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to do it. All right, Diamond 2, moving up. Uh, we went 2-1 and one today in matches. Uh, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are 71% win rate, 25 wins, and 10 losses. So, yeah, definitely getting in some more uh, matchups here. And I think that, yeah, especially in that Esper matchup, bringing in even more removal is pretty important. Just having access to deal with Rafine the moment it hits play. Because it can just run away with the game, right? So that's feeling pretty good. Looks like we're 50-50 there with um, Esper right now. And some other matchups here that are in our favor. We have 
Um, Boros here, 80%, 4-1, 7-2 and two against Mono Red. 2-0 against uh, Azorius, 2-0 against Mono Black, 2-0 against Selesnya. And then a couple 50-50s here against like Sultai, um, or like Four Color, um, and then Domain has been rough also, Domain and Jund. So a little bit of a mixed bag, but we're, I think we're learning. So we will see you here for the next one. Thank you guys so much again for watching and supporting, and you guys are awesome.